Hello guys, we're here at West London Wine School and we're uh, doing a tasting. This is a behind the scenes footage of a fantastic tasting where we've got um, a selection of great wines, uh, but we're whittling them down to the best. And this is what happens here at the school because these wines have been selected for a website which sells great wines at fantastic prices. Um, and we've got two guys behind me. We have Chris Losh from Imbibe magazine. Cheers. And we have Ben Fletcher, who's the head of Sommelier Cellar, uh, which these wines will be released on. So just follow me over here and I'll show you. We have the wines all laid in front of us. We go through these wines, we taste them, we assess them, we rate them. Uh, and I think we're already making up our mind about some of these wines. We've got, I'm guessing, some of these wines further towards the camera we're not liking so much. And the wines to the forefront are the, the better quality they're ones. Friends. They're our friends, yeah. That, they're closer to your heart as well. So, yes, we've got all these wines. We've got 30 wines. Um, we're going to pick a selection of really good ones. Uh, and we'll taste them with you, and we'll also pick some great food matches to go with. A la Gordon Ramsay. Cheers. So, as we're saying, we're, uh, we're tasting some of the reds here. Chris, Ben, uh, we're going to pick a couple of the wines we really like, and we've already got one in the glass, we're already excited about it, and it's one that's quite close to my heart. It's a region I've recently been to, it's one I really, really am an ambassador for here at school, which is Priorat. Why do we like this one so much? Um, I think this wine's got fantastic, um, lovely kind of blue fruit going on, a little bit of kind of wild strawberry and so mm. on. And it's also, what I really like about this, it's got a lovely kind of slaty feel through the palate, that kind of minerality that stretches right the way through to the finish. I think that'll be an absolutely fantastic match for, for many types of food. Um, posh burgers would be a good one. Mm. Um, most forms of beef, maybe even a bit of venison if you're, if you're feeling fancy. Uh, I think it's a cracking wine and I think it does a really good example of what Priorat can be all about as well. Um, next one we're going to go on to is the Yalumba, I believe. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And this is the signature. This is uh, Cabernet Sauvignon Shiraz 05. Why do we like this, guys? Um, I like the fact, I mean, Cabernet Shiraz is such a good kind of classic Australian wine style. And most of the ones you see kicking around are in the sort of 10 to 12 pound area. Mm. And I think what this one does is it really trades you up. You can see where the extra money goes in this. It's got such fantastic plush fruit how to much, it. How much extra money? Oh, hardly any. Hardly <laughs> any. Apparently. The pricing is incredibly reasonable. Well, actually, the pricing is damn good because it's way cheaper than you're ever going to get it anywhere else. And I think for me, if I was trying to find a kind of my first ever trade up wine for a good kind of uh, New World Aussie style thing, this would be fantastic. I think you get. Fantastic amounts of lovely, rich, ripe, silky fruit. It's got loads of tannin, but it's all beautifully integrated. Fantastic with a big chunk of, like, big rib of beef or something mm, like yeah, that on the barbecue. weekend. Barbecue, wonderful. Posh barbecue, fantastic. You know, take that around to a friend's house at a party and they will love you long time. And it's, uh, it's also the, the hallmarks of what you want from Cabernet Sauvignon and Shiraz coming through. There's an aromatic note, there's that yeah. really lovely eucalypti, minty note yeah. coming through. You've got the, the kind of berryness of the Cabernet Sauvignon, yeah. delicious, and yeah. the, the Shiraz is there giving it a bit more weight. Packs it through on the palate. Something. If yeah. you have a cold, I mean, all you need to do is you know, forget about the mix, <laughs> get your towel, stick it over this, Yeah. And that will get rid of your cold. That's wonderful. Very aromatic. So, two wines we really liked. Um, one from Old World, one from New World. Now a wine we didn't like so much, and that's the whole point of these tastings, finding the good from the bad, uh, separating the, uh, the weak. Yeah, if you like that thing, you wouldn't be, uh, yeah. It's what we're here for, you know. We don't want to recommend a bad wine. Um, so these are the ones to sort of steer clear away from with a barge pole. And this is a from the Morena coast, Tuscan coast. This is a uh, Sangiovese. Why don't we like it? What was wrong with it? Um, I, one word for me, it's Brett. And mm. it's just, it's got that kind of, I mean, a lot of European wineries have it, especially kind of, you know, Burgundy, places like this, the older style wineries quite often have it, and it's basically sort of bacterial infection in mm. the winery. Um, it can add a kind of nice kind of farmyard Smoky character to it. I think it's the when fruit. When it's in moderation. If the fruit was stronger, I think it here, might get away with it. Here, it's just gone, it's run riot, and to me, that just tastes like somebody dropped a mouse in my glass, <laughs> and it, it really, it's got sort of like so band it, old fur. Yeah, you just, get it on the nose. Like, the yeah. If you, wanted, if you wanted more information about Brett, there is another video that we have, which we talk about it for about two or three minutes. Lots of detailed information. Fantastic. Two good wines, one bad one. Check back for some whites in a second. So, white wines that have uh, really floated the boat. Not many. No. <laughs> a slightly good batch that we're 
Fortunately. Uh, Needle in the haystack kind of a yeah. job, eh? Okay, so what have we gone for? We've got two whites, uh, we're going to say which are decent, which they are, the default ones, as you said. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and then we're going to pick one which has got, which's gone over the hill, uh, mm -hmm. which is a, a Merso. First one up, the Riesling. Let's get into this. So, yeah, we had a selection of whites. We've got about uh, 12 whites, a selection of Pinot Gris, Riesling, Chardonnay, Semillon, a couple of Italians and a French. And, uh, yeah, sadly, not many showing well. I mean, the age really showing them, showing on them and, and not some complexity coming through. We've got a Riesling. Riesling does age well with that acidity. It ages well from Germany, but we're looking here. Um, Eden, is it Eden or Claire? Claire Valley. Claire Valley, 2008, four-year-old. What do you like about this? I think that this is a good, a really, a, it's a really good example of oh. Claire Valley mm -hmm. Riesling, um, and B, it had what a lot of the ones we rejected didn't, which is it still had life, it still mm. had structure, um, that would still go for another five, maybe even ten years. Um, chill it down, it's just got this lovely kind of rapier acidity that's mm. going to whip right through your palate. Um, it's very fresh, it's kind of very aromatic as well, it's yeah. got that kind of like... Um, like lime flower, yep. lemon peel, this kind of character. So it's very fresh. Um, it's not a big mouth-filling wine, but it acts to me, if you're having a, a kind of nice spicy Thai food or something, and you mm -hmm. want something just to kind of clean off the chilli on your palate, it acts like a kind of Australian fire hose. just comes in there and zaps your palate, and it, it, it's got that lovely kind of skittery, light-footed character okay. to it. So bags of acidity still, uh, yeah, it's still, acidity. It's still yeah. showing that wonderfully sort of mouth-watering touch. So anything really weird, food-wise, with a bit of sort of salt, bit of lemon sort of touch to it. We were yeah. talking about um, Gordon Ramsay's scallops earlier. Yeah. Uh, these easy to cook scallops, which uh, which are wonderful, doused in doused in salt, loads of acid there, but also serve with a salsa. Do you think it would stand up to something like that? Um, just about. Next one up, we have um, Australia again. Okay. Doing well. The Australians doing better than they did in the Olympics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. More of a classic Australian. Chardonnay. One thing we, we know that a lot of people out there really find a struggle with, with, with Aussie Chardonnays have been the past 10 years with those big over the top styles, um, oak yeah. to mask the alcohol and too much intensity. What are we finding about this one? Is it, is it, is it close to that or are we thinking it's well, just I think more elegant? The interesting thing here is that it's, um, it's a 2007, so it's quite old. You, most of the Australian Chardonnay you'd be buying in an off license would be two years old, maybe mm. three years old yep. maximum. So it's got a bit of extra age, but it's still got the great acidity, quite light mm. acidity. Um, yeah, not, it's not your buttery, oaky, but it's definitely the new, new wave of Australian Chardonnay. It's a bit more um, citrusy. Yeah, mm. yeah it's, it's not kind of tropical fruit, is it? Yeah, it's no. not that kind of pineapple. Subtle, it's stone it's fruity. It's, yeah. it's, it's yeah. Mm. And it's sweet got, apple. It's got that nice. The, the oak is actually really well judged. Mm. It's, it gives it a nice kind of slightly grilled character, you know, which I think um, would go really nicely with some like scallops or something like that. Mm -hmm. Having it with that fish um, with a bit of a richer sauce, bourbon yeah. something yeah, like exactly. that. Um, but it's still very kind of medium bodied. It's not massive and mouth filling. Um, you could drink that quite happily, just sitting on the sofa and have it on its own. Or it's actually qu it's the sort of thing that you should kind of always have in your fridge because it's it'll go across a multitude of dishes. Yep. In fact, these two whites together between them would cover pretty much most of the bases that you'd need for for food. Absolutely. So that's been a behind the scenes look at a wine judging tasting here at West London Wine School. Um, if you have any any comments about these wines, maybe you've tried them before and maybe you've you know you've got some opinions about these wines, please let us know in the comments below. We'd love to hear about them and we can have a chat to you about those wines. Um, we've also touched on quite a few different subjects about these wines as well. Things like Brett, for instance, and oxidation on a couple of wines that didn't uh, really cut up to the master for these. these top quality wines that we're looking after um, so please you know get in touch with us about those if you have any comments about those or check out the videos that we already have um, on those um, otherwise we've got some wonderful videos coming up so we're going to be matching some great great dishes from Gordon Ramsay with some wonderful wines so please look out for those forthcoming wonderful ones cheers